welcome to Hancock's VMware Half Hour. And welcome back. And are you sitting comfortably? And we'll begin. Okay, so welcome back to another episode of Hancock's VMware Half Hour. We'll try and keep this one short. Uh, so reserve 30 minutes, um, but hopefully I think we'll come in under that. Okay, so continuing the uh, mini series um, on how to VMware Workstation 17.6. Uh, well, we've already basically completed a few parts on how to install uh, various distributions of Linux uh, from Ubuntu, Fedora, CentOS, and Kali. Um, and today I'm going to continue with uh, VMware Workstation Pro 17.6 um, with another um, comment and feedback and searches against the channel that I've seen. Uh, and that's how do we install ESXi um, in VMware Workstation? Uh, normally, uh, I would install ESXi on bare metal, um, but it can be used. Um, it can be installed on VMware Workstation as a nested environment because VMware Workstation is already a Type 2 hypervisor. So by installing ESXi inside VMware Workstation, it becomes what we call a nested hypervisor. Uh, it's nested inside a hypervisor already. So it's like virtual, inside, virtual, inside, virtual. When you install a guest on ESXi, um, that's operating in a virtual environment under ESXi. And ESXi is operating under a virtual environment of VMware Workstation. So a nested environment. So now um, there... ESXi3 was retired. Uh, if we just basically type 3, 3, e, uh, 3, ESXi into Google. And um, I think you'll find that, I think it was about almost a year ago, I think, February 20 something, um, Broadcom decided that they were no longer going to continue with 3 ESXi. Um, so, Availability of the free vSphere hypervisor as an ISO is somewhat difficult to obtain. Um, if you have a valid entitlement under Broadcom, um, you can still um, obtain the ISO. Um, and um, if push comes to the shove, I'm sure that there are probably various other mechanisms that you may be able to find the ISO. So I already have the ESX ISO. Um, and again, if you've been following these videos uh, on Workstation Pro, I'm going to do file. I'm going to do new virtual machine. I'm going to select typical recommended. Um, I'm going to select install the operating system later. Uh, and I'm going to click next. Now you will notice that there is a guest operating system, VMware ESXi, already actually in the list. So VMware always knew um, that VMware Workstation uh, could be used to, to nest ESXi. So, and as I'm installing ESXi 8, I'm going to use, I'm going to select the version ESXi 8, followed by next. Um, again, I'm going to browse to our uh, four terabyte NVMe, and uh, I'm just going to cut and paste that there, followed by next. Um, I'm going to store it um, virtual disk as a single file. But what I'm actually going to do here, um, I'm just going to create a 32 gig disk because I just want to install the operating system onto a 38 gig disk. And then what we'll do, we'll add another disk as a data store. That's what I'm going to do here. Followed by next. I'm going to customize the hardware. Um, I'm also going to increase the memory as well because we're going to use this as a hypervisor. So there's very little point in having a four gig, four gig hypervisor. So I'm going to up, up the memory there to, uh, let's just say 16. Um, I'm going to give it a few more cores um so i'm going to give it uh four processors or four cores on the processor uh followed by close uh i'm going to click customize hardware 
um, and I'm going to specify the ISO, which I'm uh, lucky to have because I am entitled uh, to download it. And I'm going to click close and I'm going to click finish. And I'm just going to check carefully that um, uh, I'm also going to basically add a few more network interfaces. Um, so I'm going to add network adapter, finish, add network adapter, finish, add network adapter, finish. So I've added four virtual network adapters as well. Uh, so I'm just checking memory, 16 gig processors for hard disk 32. Uh, that looks okay. That looks okay. And I'm going to click okay. And I'm going to basically power on. I'm going to ignore that security warning there. And hopefully we will see the standard. And I'm going to click, um, I finished installing there. Don't worry about that. Okay. So, uh, if you've actually done an installation of ESXi before on a bare metal, it's going to be exactly the same. Um, it's going to be exactly the same uh, configuration, uh, exactly the same setup, exactly the same keys that we need to press, and exactly the same information that we need to put into the installer. The only difference being is, of course, uh, we're on a 12th gen Intel Core i9, and we've got 16 gig of memory, and those settings are derived from the settings that we have made in our virtual machine. Now, you know, even VMware vExperts have been using nested virtualization for a long time. Um, and there are many uh, methods and even scripts that William Lamb, um, uh, if you look at his website, I'll put that in the description. Uh, he has written many, many scripts to automate the deployment of a VMware Home Lab uh, using um, VMware Workstation uh, and ESXi and vCenter Server. Uh, now, in, in the next part, I'm going to show you a method of how to install ESXi free, which I believe is completely technically legal. Um, I'm not quite sure whether or not this is an oversight or an undersight, um, but it just occurred to me one evening while I was sleeping that I woke up with a light bulb moment thinking, hang on a minute. Um, and the reason I say this is because I have been in various forums. I'm not going to name specifically which particular forum, but I have been in various forums where I have seen people basically ask for ESXi and they've been flamed to death with it's no longer available. Da 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 da. You can't get it. Broadcom have retired it, etc., etc., etc. Which, personally, I don't think really is very helpful. Um, you know, we are supposed to be a community, and we are supposed to help people. And I personally don't think that that is very helpful. Really, being shot down in flames, telling people that it's no longer available, etc., etc., and then getting into oh, it's piracy and and everything else. Um, at the end of the day, um, if you know you want to learn VMware vSphere hypervisor ESXi. Um, and there is a mechanism for you to obtain the software. Um, I, you know, I think my opinions vary when I see software um, available on some sites to download. You, you, you don't know the origin of it. Um, and certainly on torrents um, with, you know, so much malware and trojans and viruses and all sorts of shite really, to be honest with you, um, you know, can you really trust anything really that doesn't actually basically come from the, um, come from the publisher? And then of course there are questions and issues about, um, you know, the fact that I have all the ISOs at my disposal. Um, am I actually basically breaking any rules if I share those? Um, again, I know that, you know, if you look at the EULAs, et cetera, the fact that you actually have the software, uh, you have no right to distribute it. Um, but anyway, I think I found a way that looks like it's an undersight or an oversight that you can still deploy ESXi free. That's coming in the next video. Anyway, so we will continue. So um, at the uh, installer screen, we're going to hit... Um, Remember, click to get the focus. I'm going to hit enter. I'm going to accept the agreement. It's going to go off and scan um, the 
machine to see what media is available to install the hypervisor and there's our 32 gig disc so i'm just going to hit enter i'm going to select united kingdom and i'm going to basically specify the root password make sure that you remember the root password because there is no mechanism on earth to reset it simple as that if you forget the sxi password um, then you're going to have to do a reinstallation there is no magic back door there is no um start up with a back door and press a key to reset the password it is a reinstallation i'm afraid so remember the password and to continue um okay yep i'm happy about that um so i'm going to press f11 to install um the installation is very very quick i think i timed this years ago and i think it was about 11 minutes but i think it's even quicker than that now especially if you're doing a, uh, a virtual installation and now basically it's uh, asking me to to reboot and we're done um but what i am going to do uh i'm going to hit enter on there uh it's going to say it's going to reboot but what i am going to do um i'm now just going to uh, power off that vm i'm going to say power off that's not really going to hurt it what i'm going to do now i'm going to edit the virtual machine again so i'm going to get rid of that cd rom uh so they're going to say get rid of that but what i want to do now i want to add um, another hard disk so i'm going to add a hard disk which is uh let's say it's 200 gig and it's going to create that virtual disk slowly um so while it's doing that um i'm just going to put this video on pause i'm not going to speed this up i'm just going to put this on pause while it does that okay so before i hit that button and selected create a pre-allocated 200 gig virtual disk i should have remembered it takes a while anyway we're done now and the reason why I wanted to create this 200 gig virtual disk is because that is the disk that we are going to create our VMFS data store on. And the VMFS is the VMware filing system, uh, which basically contains or stores virtual disks. So that's why I didn't actually basically create the first disk uh, as a large disk, because I actually basically wanted to segregate the operating system from the virtual machines. Um, and I would apply that practice on bare metal and I would apply that practice in production as well. So I'm going to click OK. So now I'm just going to click power on the virtual machine. And from, from this point onwards, um, we can treat VMware vSphere hypervisor 8.03C, I think this version is, uh, we can treat it exactly the same as a physical bare metal operating system exactly the same we can forget about the fact that it's actually running within uh, vmware workstation 17.6 now um and we can uh, then um i've done videos um on this before in connecting to the esxi hypervisor using a browser and we'll do this um i'll do this one step i'll connect to it and then i will create the the data store uh, and at that point uh, you can refer to all my other articles and videos that I've done on VMware vSphere 7 and VMware vSphere 8 because they are all ex very applicable uh, to this particular environment. So, okay, it's telling us to manage this host go to 192.168.189.138. So we're done with that now. You can forget about that. Uh, so you can start up your favorite browser uh somewhere i saw oh, that was on other the machine i was thinking of that i saw duck duck go but duck duck goes not on here so uh 192.168 uh 189.138 six i think it was uh 138 138 138 uh and as previously uh you will have seen if you've uh seen any of my videos before if you're not the very first time basically you're going to get a warning about connection is not private uh, i have done videos on how to basically create um a ssl certificate from a microsoft ca to overcome that issue so we're going to log in as root 
and uh, we're going to specify that magic password that i remembered and as i said to you before um don't forget to remember that password because if you forget it uh then you are going to have to reinstall um okay help us improve the vmware host client uh do you want to join the vmware customer experience improvement program or not i'm not going to at this time so i'm going to untick that um no data stores have been configured um you are currently using esxi in evaluation mode this license will expire for 60 days so i can now use all the bells and whistles of vmware vsphere hypervisor for free for 60 days after 60 days it's not going to run any of virtual machines anymore but that doesn't actually basically stop you uh reinstalling it again and getting another 60 days without applying a license so you've got 60 days free trial so um i was going to do one thing and i was going to go to storage and i was going to go to one thing i will do i'm just going to check the devices so you can see there that we've got a device a vmware disk it's a virtual disk it's 200 gig and that's the one that we added earlier so i'm going to click new data store uh, i'm just going to call it data store one uh, followed by next followed by next followed by next and followed by finish and yes i want to overwrite all those contents and now we can see here vmfs data store data store one successfully created let's say dismiss go up to host and we have now got a data store uh, which is 200 gig in size that we can install virtual machines on um, so that's it um, in this video we i was going to show you and i have shown you how we can install esxi 8 happens to be 8.03 um, on vmware workstation 17.6 that's all there is to it however you do require the official um iso available from broadcom slash vmware in the next video i'm going to show you how you can install esxi free the same version as this free um on vmware workstation pro um and obtaining that media from the broadcom website so the fact that it's available from the broadcom website i think it makes it perfectly legal um again you you're still going to be using esx on evaluation mode uh for 60 days but it's still going to give you the ability to um use and trial uh, VMware vSphere 8 for 60 days before you need to apply a license um, or reinstall ESXi again to extend that 60 days. Um, so those people out there basically that have been turning around saying ESXi free no longer exists um, and you can't download it, well, I'll show you how and you can make a decision whether or not that you think is available or not for free um and this is not actually based using a logon with an entitlement um at broadcom again as i said i don't know whether or not this is an undersight an oversight whether they've forgotten uh i don't really know uh but it was something in a light bulb moment that just went on in my head the other evening and i thought oh hang on a minute for those people struggling to get their hands on esxi 8 or 5.5 or 6 or 6.5 or 6.7 or 7 or 7.03 or 8 or any versions of 8 this maybe is a mechanism for you anyway so thanks so much for watching this video again um if you like it thumbs up if you don't like it then thumbs down and um don't forget to subscribe so once again thanks so much and goodbye and uh, and come back soon bye bye now